Good evening, everyone. This is something that I've been thinking about. And what I'm, what this video is about is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's, baptism seems to be the subject that hangs up for a lot of people. And I want to clear it up and I want to give you some verses that prove that the baptism Jesus was talking about in this verse is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this verse is Mark 16, 16 from the King James Version. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, if you notice that he that believeth and is baptized, but the second half of that verse, which many of the, you know, water baptized, you know, those who are pro-water baptism, they will leave that second verse out. And all they say is, he that is baptized, he that believeth in is baptized shall be saved. But they leave out, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, when you believe, you're automatically baptized. That's what baptizes you, is the is the believing because you're baptized or sealed, which is the same thing, sealed by the Holy Spirit. It isn't anything you do because water baptism is a physical work. And <clears throat> because of John, excuse me, because of John's baptism, that was water. A lot of people get hung up on the water part, but they ignore all the verses about water baptism. I mean, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they claim that you, that the Bible doesn't teach baptism by the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to prove that it does. I have, um, I've made up several uh, images with scripture verses on them. And I have them listed out so that you can pause this uh, video and take a screenshot or write down the verse or highlight it in your Bible or on your electronic Bible. <clears throat> but it the Bible does teach baptism by the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to prove that. And the uh, funny noise you hear is Oscar purring, and I know it's this video is going to pick it up. So let's get started. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was so important that it was mentioned in all four Gospels. And something that is mentioned in all four Gospels, which I'm going to prove that it is. But if it's something that's mentioned in all four Gospels, it's something that you need to pay attention to. So Matthew 3.11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And if you'll read this verse, it says I, you know, John was talking and he says, I baptize you with water unto repentance. And what he was saying is that I baptize you with water. And the repentance he was talking about here is changing their minds and turning from trusting in the law or trusting in anything that they are doing and trusting in the God of heaven, El Shaddai, uh, Jehovah Jireh, all of his names, because, and at this point in time, they didn't trust in Christ because Christ ha was alive at this time. He hadn't went to the cross and died for everybody's sins yet, but God still expected them to put their tr faith and trust in him. The Paul tells us that Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. That's what we are required to do. I mean, the Old Testament, the New Testament, believe, believe, believe. But what keeps these people from believing and keeping them from, you know, resting, they trust in their own works because they feel that they're, 
better than God and they feel that their works are better than God and they're going to stand up and expect God who created them to be indebted to them. That would be like if you were a potter and you made a mug, a coffee mug, and somehow that coffee mug that you made decided that you owed that coffee mug something because it holds coffee and allows you to drink out of it. Now, how stupid does that sound? That sounds pretty darn stupid, but so does working for your salvation when the Bible says believe and rest throughout it. And there are so many different channels. Renee Rowland is probably is one of my favorites. Because she just puts it right on out there and she doesn't care that she doesn't, you know, she doesn't uh, mince words. She doesn't beat around the bush. She tells you exactly how it is because she loves you enough to tell you how it is. Uh, Pastor Tim Henderson, Barry Scarborough, um, Robert Breaker, Ralph Yankee Arnold. He is one of my favorite pastors is Ralph Yankee Arnold. I absolutely love him. So if you were just <clears throat> Renee Roland and Ralph Yankee Arnold, you'd be set just perfect and you'd end up in heaven. But uh, there's so much that I want to say for this. And because the time, I believe our time is short. I believe it's shorter than what we even think it is. And I'm under a bit of stress because of the unsaved members of my family. And I'm just planting seeds and and I'm just praying that God waters those seeds and it brings it to fruition before the rapture. So with that, I'm going to move on so I don't have a too long of a video. The next verse is Mark 1, eight. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I, I mean, how clear, how much more clear does it need to be? But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. This is teaching that the baptism that Jesus talked about is the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And the next verse that um, that I want to cover, I have a few things that, um, because there's a lot that's taken out of context with these verses that should not be taken out of context. And I want to clear those up. So let's move on to the next verse. This next verse is Luke 3.16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchets whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Here we go again. This is the third gospel, same message. <coughs> And Matthew also said, Matthew as well as Luke also says, and with fire. Now, this is what I wanted to clear up. The Pentecostals say, oh, I feel the baptism of fire. And so, no, no, you don't. Not if you're alive. But I got to tell you, most of the Pentecostals are going to feel the baptism of fire after they die because the baptism of fire is hell. I mean, my goodness. Come on, it is so clear here. You want to be baptized by the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to explain how to do that here, and I'm going to explain it again towards the end of the video. But how you get baptized by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, however you want to say it, however you're comfortable with, you're baptized once you believe, once you put your full faith and trust in the shed blood, in the finished work that Jesus Christ had done on the cross. And yes, it is finished. And all these people that are claiming that, oh, you have to repent of all your sins, that's impossible. How do you know 
all of your sins. You know, David said, you know, keep me from presumptuous sins, lest I sin against thee. Presumptuous sins are those he didn't even know were sins. And David, what David was saying is, Lord, you know all my sins. I don't know all my sins. And Lord, please forgive me of all my sins. Because when David was alive, Christ wasn't there yet. Christ hadn't even been born. I mean, I know in Revelation, it tells us that Christ died for all of our sins at the foundation of the world. So yes, David was saved. All the people in the Old Testament were saved as long as they put their faith and trust in the God of heaven and they believe him. Abraham, you know, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. I mean, how much, how much more clear does this have to be? And, you know, at the, at the judgment seat of Christ in Matthew, when they're saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we heal the sick in your name? Didn't we, you know, raise the dead in your name? You know, when I was reading that, and I still feel it, when I, it was, I, I felt a strong connection to the five I wills of Satan. You know, Satan's I wills, and connected to, you know, let's put it in singular. Lord, didn't I heal the sick in your name? Didn't I raise the dead in your name? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do all these other wonderful works in your name? It's not focused on Christ and what Christ did. It's focusing on what they did. And in Matthew, that's not the rapture that many people claim. That is Christ's physical second coming on this earth. And that is the judgment seat of Christ. You don't want to be at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, you're when you die, you stand before Christ as either your savior or your judge, and you want to stand before him as your savior. And if you're trusting in yourself for salvation, if you're doing anything for salvation other than believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe on the one whom God hath sent. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only work you are to do, is to believe on Jesus Christ. Believe on the one whom God has sent, John six twenty nine. And I know I've gone a long time on this image, but uh, let's move on to the next one because I have several more verses. The next verse is John one thirty three, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom that shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth, which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And... The one who sent John the Baptist, the baptizer, was God the Father. And he was telling him who to look for. The one where the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit descends and stays upon is the one who he's been looking for. The one who, you know, the Messiah, the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And he, again, he says, is whom who is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. It's, and later on when you're reading the different Gospels, the disciples were you know, baptizing people, but Jesus himself did not water baptize a single person. And let's talk about the thief on the cross for a moment. A lot of people say, oh, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized. Well, yes, he was. 
The four verses that I've shown you thus far prove that he was because he believed he told Jesus, you know, he told the other thief that Jesus was innocent. He had done nothing wrong. And then he had asked Jesus to remember him and his kingdom. He was basically telling Jesus he believed him. And Jesus told him, today you shall be with me in paradise. He, what the thief believed and he was he was holy spirit baptized he was not water baptized he was holy spirit baptized and i have a few more verses that i want to show you that prove that the baptism that we are to receive is the baptism of the holy ghost the next verse is Acts 1-5. But before I read this, I want to uh, let you know that Acts is a transitional book. It is a book that was transitioning between the Old, between the Old Testament and the church age. The Old Testament was the time when God gave the law to the Jews, not so they could keep it perfectly, but so that they could understand and know that they can't be saved by the law because the law can't save them. And it tells us this all through the New Testament. But Acts is a transitional book between Old Testament and the Age of Grace. So the transition between law and grace. And Jesus Christ kept the law perfectly. And when he died on the cross, he died on the cross, not only for us, but as us. And he obeyed the law perfectly. And when we rest in Christ's finished work, it's as if we obeyed the law perfectly. Because he did. And the next verse is Acts 1 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So here again, we've got the baptism, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Bible does teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we have it over and over again. And. <clears throat> Before Jesus died on the cross, when he was talking to his disciples, he actually said that he that he had to go so that the Comforter could come and bring and remind us of <clears throat> what Jesus had taught. And when we're baptized or sealed by the Holy Ghost, same thing, being sealed by the Holy Ghost, being baptized by the Holy Ghost, the same thing. And that is the baptism that <clears throat> Christ said that we had to have. And how do you get that baptism again? You get it by believing. Believe, believe, believe. The Gospel John was written to the unsaved. And I think it tells us to believe and in the Gospel of John, it has the word believe. I do believe it's 58 times, I think. And But yet, repent or repenting, repentance is not in the Gospel of John anywhere. The Gospel of John is written to the unsaved to tell them how to get saved. The Sermon on the Mount, which everybody says, oh, I follow the Sermon on the Mount. Well, that's unfortunate because the Sermon on the Mount was written to the legalist. Those who say, oh, you have to obey the law in order to get saved. Oh, you have to do all kinds of works in order to get saved. Well, that's in the Sermon on the Mount is law 2.0. Oh, you think you have to follow the law in order to get saved? Well, here, let me expound on that. Let me expand the law for you. And like I've said before in the past, when you commit one sin, it's not as if you're committing only one sin. It's as if you are committing 600 
40 sins for that one sin. And each time you sin, it's another 640. That is a lot of sins just because you messed up once. You had a bad thought? 640 sins. <clears throat> you had wrong motive? 640 sins. You got angry and judged your brother? 640 sins. You got angry and judged anybody? 640 sins. Wow. Just think about that for a moment. And you're going to stand before God guilty of 640 sins each time you sinned. All because you felt, oh, I've got to work for my salvation because I've got to make God a debtor to me. Well, that's not going to happen. God's going to tell you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. And you are a worker of iniquity, your lawlessness. And the reason why your lawlessness is because your sins aren't forgiven, because you're not resting. You sit up there and you put discipleship before salvation and you say that you know in order to be saved, you have to be a disciple. That's a lie. Straight from Satan. Satan doesn't want you to get saved and he's using people like Ray Comfort and John MacArthur and Ray Comfort's pet, Kurt Cameron. He's using them mightily. Because he is, they are just steeped in the law. Oh, and I forgot Paul Washer. Oh my goodness, there are so many out there that are just steeped in the law. You know what, you want to stay steeped in the law? Okay, fine. What you're doing is you are repeating Satan's five I wills. That's exactly what you're doing. Because you're claiming you're better than God. You have taken God's standard of total, complete, absolute perfection. You have put it under your feet. You stomped on it and you said you're better. Well, you're not. And you will hear the words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Well, with that, let's move on to the next verses. The next two verses are Acts 2, 2 and 3. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. This was the first baptism of the Holy Spirit. When they were in the room and the Holy Spirit came upon them, and it says, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just, wow. <clears throat> but this was the first baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want to try and keep this video a little shorter. So I'm going to move fast because I have three more verses after the, after these two. Acts 11.15 And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. <clears throat> as on us at the beginning, Acts 2, 2, and 3 that I just read. Then remembered I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, this verse is uh, telling me that Luke did witness Christ's teaching. <coughs> Which is uh, amazing because Luke was a Gentile. He was a doctor. He was a Gentile doctor. And he wrote the Gospel of Luke and he wrote Acts. And so this verse is telling me that Luke did witness Jesus' teaching. Because he said, then remembered I the word of the Lord. Now that how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So, you know, and you got to realize the word, uh, uh, but, 
There it is. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. But that means something different than what was going on. So I don't know how to explain this any better or, or even any clearer. I hope I'm clear enough. But if I'm not, you have the verses right in front of you. Please read them. Ask God, you know, pray to God. Ask him to show you the truth of his word. He will show you. He wants you to know the truth. He doesn't want you to continue believing the devil's lies. So ask God to help you. Let's move on. This is the last verse that I'm going to show you. And it's Galatians 3.27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And... You know, a lot of people would look at this verse and ignore all the verses that I gave you in this exact video before this verse. They totally forget them and somehow claim that this verse was meaning water baptism. When it's not, this is not through water baptism. This is through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not by water. In order to put on Christ, you have to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. I gave you several verses before this one. So, I'm just praying that... I'm just praying that... People who are leaning on water baptism and claiming, oh, we have water baptism, we've been baptized. Well, if you didn't believe, you were never baptized. You, you know, like, like some people have said, <clears throat> if you're not believing, you're going down into the water a dry sinner and you're coming up a soaking wet sinner. If you don't believe... You're not baptized. I don't care how many times you get wet. Goodness gracious, I've prayed in the shower. And, you know, I didn't come up all soaking wet in a robe. And I was actually washing off and getting clean and smelling better. And praying while I was doing it. But, you, you know, and I totally, and I totally believed. I was baptized by the Holy Spirit on my balcony. And my goodness, I stayed up on that balcony, and I refused to leave that balcony until I got saved. And I was up there more than 12 hours because the devil was keeping me from understanding and believing the gospel. But I finally got it. And, you know, he tries so hard to get me to question my salvation he tries so hard. But you know what? I'm saved because Jesus Christ did absolutely everything necessary for me to be saved. He shed his blood for me. Matter of fact, he shed his blood for every single person on this planet. The whole world. And not just, you know, those of... You know, before Jesus Christ, but also after him too. And the scriptures tell us this. Goodness gracious, these legalists ignore more than half the Bible. And the Bible that, and the scriptures they do pay attention to, they take totally and completely out of context. They, oh my goodness, come on people. It's not difficult. It's not hard. I'm giving you the scriptures. Pause the video. Take screenshots. <clears throat> Write them down. Study them. Use a Strong's Concordance. Study the meaning of these different words. Stop listening to man. Woe unto you who, be, you know, who, who make flesh's arm, who trust in man puts his faith in man makes flesh his arm who makes 
who leans upon flesh instead of leaning upon God, who leans upon flesh, who leans upon man, who puts man before God, who puts them, who elevates themselves before God, woe unto you. You're cursed. You're cursed. Because your heart has turned away from away from the Lord. And you lean on man instead of God. You believe what man says and you don't believe what God says. It's evident in your false teaching. My goodness, time is short. And there's so many people that are caught up in, in false religion. And they're refusing to listen to truth because they've got it stuck in their head that they have to do something. Because, you know, they claim that, oh, Christ dying on the cross wasn't enough. You know, and, and Ray Comfort, Ray Discomfort had said, Oh, these people think they're saved just because Jesus died on a cross. What kind of demon-possessed comment was that? Come on. You know, I mean, if these legalists were actually true grace teachers and they believed in the gospel, they would be the most excellent disciple teachers. If... They put, if they separated gospel from discipleship. Gospel is 100% God. 0% you. Discipleship, which comes after salvation, all the works you do are nothing but filthy rags. They are menstrual rags. Or put it in today's vernacular, used tampons. All these works you're doing are equivalent to used tampons. That would be like you walking up to God, handing him, trying to hand him a pile of used tampons and expecting him to be impressed. Well, it's not going to happen. He's not going to accept your used tampons. So, well, I've complained enough. I'm seeing so much, and I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm reading the news, and there is absolutely no good in the news. And I'm telling you, you know, if what I'm seeing now isn't the mark of the beast, it's definitely mark of the beast technology. And it's making sense. It's almost like... um. It's like the tribulation is making sense. It's falling into place. Well, with that, good night, everyone, or good morning, wherever you are. And if you are saved, I was not ranting at you. And I really shouldn't rant at the unsaved. But time is so short. Time is short. I, I cannot afford not to rant at the unsaved. Either you believe or you don't. If you don't fully 100% believe, you're a non-believer and you're unsaved. Oh, and discipleship, before I got on the rant, is 100% you, 100% God. Or better put it, 100% God, 100% you. That's discipleship.